The other issue is that, you know, is it Islam and democracy or is it Islamic democracy? You see, one of the legacies, I didn't mention this before, it was important, one of the important and horrible legacies of colonialism is that most Muslims live in undemocratic and authoritarian states that are themselves the legacy of colonialism because those rules were established in the wake of the end of colonialism and the way in which colonialism ended. So uh, I know that a lot of people say that Turkey uh, democracy. I know some people deny that Turkey is a democracy at all, but they do have elections, and elections have consequences in Turkey. You know, P parties get voted in, parties get voted out. Why? Also, Turkey is the only country, one of the few countries that has a true middle class. I know lots of people in Turkey, including people in my own family, who two generations ago were non-literate and living in villages, who now have children with PhDs and who are doctors and lawyers. You know. That, you know, the, Turkey's a modern country in that sense, okay? And some people say, well, that's because Ataturk embraced the West and rejected Islam. No, it's because Ataturk kept Turkey from being colonized. Turkey was the one country in the Middle East that was not, that was not ruled by people from outside. So Turks make lots of mistakes, like everybody else, but they don't walk around with the sort of legacy of colonialism on their shoulder. And I think that's important to think about. So that when we blame the problems in the Muslim world that we see dealing with corruption and violence and authoritarianism, those are the same problems you see in countries that are non-Muslim that were colonized by Europe as well. It's not about Islam. It's about colonialism. And colonialism is really horrible. I'm sorry. I know there are people who say, yeah, but they, got, they brought you trains and, and, and roads and stuff. But having somebody else tell you what the truth is is not a good thing. Islam and violence. Again, and, and for, you know, Dr. Shafi had a wonderful discussion about that yesterday. The whole issue of how do we define jihad and how do we define terrorism and is violence ever justified? You know? I always find it amazing that Americans argue that political violence is never acceptable in a country that on the 4th of July celebrates its armed revolution every year. I mean, I can't Im there are some times, and again, this is something we can learn from the prophet. The prophet always tried to do things in a pacific way if he could, but sometimes violence was unavoidable, and when it was, then you had to figure out, you know, there are some people who argue that part of the reason the Crusades got so awful was that when you put warfare completely outside the system by saying that, well, you know, Jesus says, you know, no war, so that when you have war, there's no rules, because war is not part of human conduct. And that's an interesting argument, you know. But, you know, these are questions that, and by the way, not only Muslims, all of us have to ask those questions. When is violence justified? I mean, for those of us, you know, for people who are Quakers and Mennonites, this is easy. Violence is always wrong, okay, you can do that. But for most people in any religious tradition and most secular people, we ha always have to be asking the question, is violence ever justified? And if so, when? And when you do it, how? And it's not only Muslims who have to ask that question. All of us have to ask that question. Issues of gender, these are big ones. Although I have a rule in my classes that I don't let students write papers on headscarves. Just, not because I don't think it's an, I think that issue is so overblown and done to death and it's just, you know, how a few square feet of cloth define an entire tradition. So if you want to write about gender, find another topic, okay? I don't know about the rest of you, but how many students walk in and say, I want to write a paper about headscarves in Islam, as if that's the most important thing that defines, you know, the difference between men and women in Islam.